Hello everyone. This week marks the beginning of our lessons on organic chemistry. Our first two topics cover modules 8 and 9 in your course guide. We will discuss the history and nature of organic chemistry, then an introduction to functional groups. The simplest definition of organic chemistry is that it is the study of compounds containing the carbon atom. The study of organic chemistry is important because living organisms are made up of organic compounds. And many of the products we use daily are made from organic compounds. Examples are fuel, cosmetics, drugs, jewelry, paints, plastics, soaps, paper, and food additives. The term organic chemistry was coined by the Swedish physician Jons Jacob Berzelius in 1806. He gave this branch of chemistry the name organic because in those days, chemists believed that the group of compounds they considered organic could only be derived from biological materials. This belief led to what was called the vital force theory or vitalism. This theory, however, was disproven by the German chemist Friedrich Waller in 1828. In one of the most important experiments in the world of chemistry, Waller accidentally produced urea, an organic compound found in urine, from non-biological or inorganic materials. Waller's experiment proved that organic compounds could also be created from inorganic materials. His discovery soon led to the creation of many other organic compounds from inorganic materials. The vital force theory faded into history. Why is the element carbon considered the backbone of organic chemistry? Scientists studying organic compounds have pointed out several important characteristics of carbon that make it a one-of-a-kind element that deserves its own branch of chemistry. Carbon is the sixth element in the periodic table. It belongs to the non-metal group along with oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, sulfur, phosphorus, and selenium. By now, you should already be familiar with this element. We have used carbon as our example in previous modules discussing electron structures and configurations. Because of its four valence electrons, carbon atoms form reasonably strong covalent bonds with other carbon atoms and other atoms of other elements. Carbon atoms can form up to four covalent bonds with itself or with other elements. Carbon forms some of the most valued molecules by bonding to itself. Diamond is made of only one element, carbon. The carbon atoms in diamond are arranged in a crystal-like lattice. This structure makes diamond extremely strong and stable. Carbon can also bond to form layers of sheets. This arrangement leads to the material called graphite. You should be familiar with graphite because this is the material we use in pencils for writing. A lead pencil is actually made from graphite, not the lead element. Most organic compounds have a base structure that is composed of carbon bonded to another carbon atom. The C to C bonds may be single, double, or triple. Carbon forms a total of four bonds. Not all compounds that contain carbon can be considered organic compounds. For instance, carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide are not organic compounds. Carbon atoms that are bonded to hydrogen atoms are organic compounds. These carbon to hydrogen molecules can have oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, and phosphorus atoms bonded to them and be considered organic compounds. Note that these heteroatoms are all nonmetals like carbon. Here are some organic compounds that may already be familiar to you. They were introduced in previous modules on Lewis structures. We have methane, acetone, propane, and acetylene. We also have acetic acid, ethyl alcohol, ether, 
and aspirin. Organic compounds are commonly classified and named based on the type of functional group present. What is a functional group? A functional group is an atom or group of atoms that influences the way the molecule to which it belongs functions, reacts, or behaves. In other words, the functional group is the center of reactivity in an organic compound. Functional groups are crucial to organic compounds. This table shows many of the functional groups in organic chemistry. The rest of our semester will be devoted to discussing the most important functional groups. For now, let's learn some basic information about some of these functional groups. Our first functional group is alkane. Alkane is the simplest organic compound. It is called a hydrocarbon because it is made up of only carbon and hydrogen atoms. Alkanes are distinguished by the suffix ane in their name. Methane, ethane, propane, and butane are important alkanes because they are used as fuel. Next, we have alkene. An alkene is any hydrocarbon chain that has a C double bonded to C. This could be just one C double bond C or two or more C double bond Cs. Alkenes are distinguished by the suffix in in their name. Ethylene is a ripening hormone found in fruits but it is also made into the plastic polyethylene. Neoprene is a synthetic rubber used to make medical gloves. Then we have alkyne. An alkyne is any hydrocarbon that has a C triple bonded to another C. There could be just one or multiple of these bonds in a compound. Alkynes are distinguished by the suffix "-ine", in their name. Acetylene, or formerly known as ethyne, is used as fuel to cut and weld steel. Our next functional group is alcohol, or the hydroxyl group. It is distinguished by the OH attached to the chain of carbon atoms, represented by the letter R. Alcohols are distinguished by the suffix OL in their name. We are familiar with isopropanol because we use it as a disinfectant along with ethanol. Silitol is a sugar substitute that we use in gums and sweeteners. Next, we have ether. An ether has an oxygen atom bonded to two carbon chains on either side. It is distinguished by either the il ether or oxy ether name. It is used as a solvent for perfumes, waxes, and gums. Dimethyl ether is an aerosol propellant. Next, we have haloalkane. A haloalkane is any halogen bonded to a carbon chain. It is also known as an alkyl halide. Haloalkanes are named using the halogen prefix plus the hydrocarbon chain to which it is attached. Dichloromethane is used in paint strippers and as aerosols in insecticides and spray paint. The next group is the aldehyde. An aldehyde includes a carbonyl group, which is a carbon atom double bonded to an oxygen atom and attached to a carbon chain and hydrogen. Aldehydes are distinguished by the suffix al in their name. Acetaldehyde is used as a starting material for flavorings, plastics, 
perfumes, acetate, etc. Then we have ketone. A ketone has a carbonyl group sandwiched by carbon chains. Ketones are distinguished by the suffix "-one", in their name. Cyclohexanone is used in the manufacture of nylon. Testosterone is a naturally occurring ketone considered the male sex hormone. Then we have carboxylic acid. A carboxylic acid has a carbonyl group sandwiched by a carbon chain and a hydroxyl group. It is symbolized by the letter COOH. Carboxylic acids are distinguished by the suffix oic acid in their name. Methanoic acid, also known as formic acid, is released by ants when they bite their enemies. You may have already felt this formic acid when an ant bites you and it itches. Next, we have ester. An ester has a carbonyl group sandwiched by a carbon chain and an oxygen atom bonded to another carbon chain. Esters are distinguished by the suffix il -O in their name. Ethyl ethanoate, also known as ethyl acetate, is used as a solvent and to decaffeinate coffee and tea. Then we have the amide group. An amide has a carbonyl group sandwiched by a carbon chain and a nitrogen atom. Amides are distinguished by the suffix amide in their name. Paracetamol, also known as acetaminophen, is an amide with the formal name of N4-hydroxyphenylacetamide and for hydroxyphenyl ethanamide. Then we have the amine group. An amine has a carbon chain bonded to a nitrogen atom with a lone pair of electrons. Amines are distinguished by the suffix amine in their name. Methamphetamine is a psychostimulant drug that is banned in many countries. Then we go to the nitrile group. A nitrile has a cyano group attached to a carbon chain. The cyano group is a carbon triple bonded to a nitrogen atom. Nitriles are distinguished by the suffix nitrile in their names. Mandelonitrile, found in the pits of some fruits like almond, may release the toxic substance hydrogen cyanide when ingested. Finally, we have arin or aromatic hydrocarbon. An arin consists of an alternating single and double bonds between carbon atoms forming a ring structure. Arins are distinguished by the suffix benzene in their names. The compound benzene typifies arins and is naturally found in crude oil. There are a couple of important terms that you should be familiar with now. Alkenes are often called saturated hydrocarbons. This means that these compounds are composed of carbon and hydrogen that contain the largest possible number of hydrogen atoms per carbon atom. In simple terms, it means that the carbon atoms are all single bonded to hydrogen atoms. Alkenes, alkynes, and aromatic hydrocarbons are called unsaturated hydrocarbons. These compounds are composed of carbon and hydrogen that contain less hydrogen than an alkene having the same number of carbon atoms. In simple terms, this means that some of the carbon atoms form double or triple bonds with other carbon atoms, thereby having fewer bonds with hydrogen. Now let's do an exercise on identifying functional groups. 
we have here two organic compounds, thyroxine and testosterone. Let's start with thyroxine. Thyroxine is a hormone released by our thyroid glands. Can you identify what functional groups are present in this compound? Before we continue, one thing to note about chemical structures in organic chemistry is that each corner here represents a carbon atom bonded to either another carbon atom or hydrogen. So if this is carbon, then this is carbon. And following the octet rule, the carbon is bonded to hydrogen, but the hydrogen is unwritten for more clarity in the structure. Okay, so I'll give you a few seconds to find the functional groups in thyroxine. Okay, so thyroxine has five functional groups. You may already have noticed the hydroxyl group here. So we'll write hydroxyl. We have a carboxylic acid group here. We have an amine here. This oxygen is bonded to carbon atoms on either side, which makes it an ether. And this one here is an arene. In later modules, when we cover arenes in more detail, we will know that an arene bonded to a halogen is called an aryl halide. Okay, so those are the five functional groups in thyroxine. Let's move on to testosterone. I'll give you a few seconds to find the functional groups in testosterone. Okay, so testosterone has four functional groups. You may have noticed already the hydroxyl group here. This is a cycloalkane. This is a carbon double bonded to another carbon which makes it an alkene. And then we have a carbon here double bonded to oxygen and bonded to two carbon atoms, which makes it a ketone. So those are the four functional groups in testosterone. Now let's have another pair of organic compounds. Can you find the functional groups in these two compounds? Let's start with lisinopril. I'll give you a few seconds to find the functional groups in lisinopril. Okay, so lisinopril has four functional groups. It has two amines here and here. It has two carboxylic acid groups here and here. It has an arene and an amide. So that's four functional groups for lisinopril. Now let's go to vanillin. I'll give you a few seconds to find the functional groups in vanillin. So vanillin also has four functional groups. This is an arene here. It has an aldehyde here. A hydroxyl group here and this oxygen bonded to two carbon atoms makes it an ether. So these are the four functional groups in vanillin. What this exercise tells us is that large compounds can have more than one functional group in it. As we discuss in more detail these functional groups in succeeding modules, you will learn more about the order of precedence of these functional groups when it comes to naming compounds. 
And that's it for this lecture. In this lecture, we defined organic chemistry, briefly discussed the history of organic chemistry, described the importance of carbon in the study of organic chemistry, and learned about the unique characteristics of each functional group and how to identify them within larger compounds. The deadline for submission of Module 8 Activity Worksheet will be posted in Google Classroom. Instructions on how to submit the requirements are written in the module. Thank you for listening.